folks. So lovely to see you all. And uh, yeah, so this is Poetry in Motion. Uh, as Debbie said, she's going to uh, start off um, and kind of go through um, a, a piece. And then I'm going to go through and go through a piece. And we'll probably both of us be um, kind of chipping in a little bit um, onto kind of thoughts on that. So um, feel free, as you know how much Debbie loves to use the uh, text chat, feel free to use the chat as much as you like, um, and then text chat. But as Ian said, just make sure if you've got a question, you uh, either raise your actual physical hand um, in this session more so than the others, just make sure we're just not unmuting um, and just kind of uh, speaking out without just waiting. Because again, otherwise I might lose my train of thought. And if I tangent, that'll add half an hour onto the end of the session. Uh, so Debbie, I pass over to your fine self and I will mute myself until I need to say something or interrupt. Five minutes. Um, yeah, it, I'd rather you put your hands up and spoke than uh, put it in the chat, but that's just me. Use the chat. Just a, <laughs> just a quick mention, it does appear from the schedule that this is going to be all about uh, Don't Let the Sun Go Down on Me, but that Simon and I spoke about it and all of the uh, video sessions are done. So taking the lyrics to pieces and trying to help you... Um, meaning in the lyrics seems a bit bonkers really so we've both picked a, a different song each the principle of looking at, at a song like a piece of literature and trying to get into it is the same whatever song you choose so uh, that's we've just done it that way because it, it just seemed to have been a bit backwards yeah so because by now you should all know what the song's about otherwise um <laughs> otherwise you've had it oh is there another video session later today i don't yeah. know I'm, well, I've looked at a timetable, but yeah. I'm guessing by now you should, you know, you've been doing it all weekend. So we, we there's been quite that... a few performance sessions, haven't there? Anyway, on the meaning of the words of the song and we've had yeah, performance yeah. sessions and pre-record. So I think I think I'm happy with us doing something different. And again, just going through that, that analysis is, a, is an interesting one, uh, especially when you then listen to how it's been transferred within into within a piece of music. So, yeah, yeah. it's great. It's good to be here. I've just had a little personal message from Debs Linda saying, sorry about subjecting me to the torture of the chat. She understands me. She knows where I'm coming from. <laughs> OK, well, the piece I've picked, some of you will. Um, it was a massive hit back in about 1980, I think. Obviously, I was barely a toddler at that point. But um, wasn't Simon born. wasn't born. Yeah, or before he says it. Um, <laughs> but it's a song called Romeo and Juliet by Dire Straits. OK, it's one of my top three favourite ever, ever, ever sing uh, singles. So um, I, I love it and I love it mainly because of um, the cleverness of the lyrics. So if I share my screen and put the lyrics up in case you're all frantically looking on Google for them. Um, uh, hang on a second. Uh, got to remember what I'm doing. Share screen and I only need don't need any sound. And oh, look, there's Simon. Sorry, everybody. Uh, can you all see? What a I'll cover him devil. up. Cover him up. Oi. Yeah. Can you people, can you nod if you can see the lyrics for Romeo and Juliet? Okay. Brilliant. You might want to uh, full screen it possibly if you can, because it I can see it. Okay. If someone's on a little screen, and then just zoom in and maybe scroll down, Debbie. Sorry. Just I know some people's screens aren't as big as ours. How do I zoom into it then? I Go down no to idea. the bottom right hand side where there's the plus. There's a percentage right at the bottom right hand side. To the right, to the right, to the right, to the right, to the right. Play, go on to the plus. What the little, plus? The, just go up. Yeah, yeah. There. Plus. Yeah. Oh, plus, oh. plus, plus, plus. Keep on plusing. Keep on plusing until it basically is the width. And then you can just drag up and down to scroll up and down. So if you drag upwards. Drag what? Oh, have, you got a, have you got a scroll there. wheel? There, 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 there. Like yeah, that. there you go. Yeah, there you go. That's it. And then everyone can see your words and everything. It's just a little bit bigger. Those of you who, have, who find it difficult to believe I'm a secretary and get paid for it, it's true, I do. <laughs> OK, so the first thing I want to say is, obviously, when you hear a song, if you don't know what it is, you don't know the title. So um, we don't know it's Romeo and Juliet. So when the music starts, we, we've got no idea what's coming. But very, very quickly, he says a love struck Romeo, which instantly tells us that it's going to be a love song and also tells us that it's unlikely to have a happy ending. Would everybody agree that most things to do with Romeo and Juliet are not jolly little japes? They're all pretty dark. So very, very quickly, he sets the scene with the um, with the fact that it's Romeo and Juliet. Um, laying everybody low with a love song that he made. Now, there's two ways we can look at this. Because laying everybody low means to 
to weaken them. So does he mean he's laying everybody low as in, oh, oh I'm weak because it's so good? Or is he, is he laying everybody low because he's a rubbish guitarist? Now, rumour has it he wrote it about himself and an ex-girlfriend. So if that's the case, he's an absolutely amazing guitarist. Mark Knopfler, we all know that. Well, I'm guessing we all know that. If you don't know who he is, you're about to find out. Um, so I'm guessing he's saying everybody he makes everybody weak with this fantastic um, love song that he's written. OK, so that's the way I'm wanting to go with it. Um, and then we've got all these S sounds. So a love struck Romeo sings the streets, a serenade. And then we get this street light steps out of the shade, says something. So this repetition of S, it, it just draws your attention to to the words and the softness and the sort of rhythmic lyrical quality that that repetition gives you i think it's a lovely lovely verse so it's it's setting the scene for me for a real love song that's coming and um, we don't know much else about it at the moment other than um star crossed possibly um and it's going to end not very well um apparently he wrote it after a breakup with a woman called holly vincent who used him to boost a career, or allegedly used him to boost a career, and when she became famous and 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 successful, dumped him. So it's got a definite feeling of unrequited love from quite early on. So that's the first verse. Um, Juliet says, "Hey, it's Romeo. You nearly gave me a heart attack." So she's a little bit dismissive of it, of him. He's underneath the window. Now this is one of my favourite lines. Immediately telling us that Julia is upstairs in an upstairs window. So we've got the famous balcony scene. We've got the famous balcony scene. So it's very, very um, linked to the Shakespeare, Romeo and Juliet all the time. He's not just used the words. There's lots of little things that take us back to that classic while being in the, I say, in an up-to-date setting. It was up-to-date in 1980. For some of us, that's still the day we live in. Um, and then she's singing Hey La, My Boyfriend's Back. It's a 1963 song by the Angels. Hey La, My Boyfriend's Back. So she's almost taking the mickey out of him. Yeah, he's here underneath the window, swearing undying love, and she's being a little bit sarcastic, taking the mickey out of him. You shouldn't come round here singing up at people like that. People, very general, very dismissive. She's not saying singing up at me. She's sort of like sending him away. Anyway, what are you going to do about it? Not very nice. Juliet's not very nice in this song. He's here, absolutely in love with her, broken hearted, and she's pretty much dismissing him. I want to play it to there for those who don't know it so that you can start to get a feel for it. Famous guitarist at the beginning, he was tuning his guitar um, on an open string, and apparently that this sort of arpeggio sound came to him, and that's how he got this riff that keeps coming back from trying to tune. If I wrote anything from trying to tune my clarinet, it'd be hilarious. But so that's the, the story of the riff. So let's play it and let's have a listen and see if you can pick out these words. And if you don't know um, who they are, I'm going to have to get rid of that share to share again, aren't I? Um, if you don't know who they are, just listen to his um, voice because it's it's amazing. Absolutely amazing. Yeah, I need to share sound. Am I showing a tune? What am I doing? Um can I keep the words up and share the sound from um, Spotify, Simon? You're muted. He's nodding. Right, let's see if this works. Let's see if this works. Oh, you won't be able to see the music because you will. You will. Don't be stupid, Debbie, because if I do that... Perfect. Hear that riff? Sing the streets a serenade Laying everybody low With a love song that he made Find the street light Steps out of the shade Says something like You and me, babe How about it? Juliet says Hey, it's Romeo You nearly give me a heart attack He's underneath the window She's singing Hey, like my boyfriend's back Shouldn't come around here singing up at people like that. Anyway, what you gonna do about it? Okay. Did you hear the way 
when he sang Hey La, My Boyfriend's Back, he had a bit of a nah, 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 type of uh, little tone in his voice. He's not the best singer, in the, is he? Nobody can say he's the best singer, but there's something about his voice that draws me in and, and engages me in, in anything he does, uh, particularly this song. I love this song. But I am a bit of a romantic at heart. I don't think it, anybody would find that difficult to believe. OK, then we move on to another fantastic set of lyrics. Um, Juliet, the dice was loaded from the start, suggesting to me that from the beginning it, things were against them. Yeah, as, in, as with Romeo and Juliet, things were against them. And then he keeps the dice idea and says, and I bet, as if he's bet on a dice game. So it, it's a nice sort of link between the two. Um, then you exploded into my heart. So clearly, it's one of those relationships that comes from nowhere, becomes all-consuming, uh, and eventually burns itself out. And then we get here, and I forget, I forget the movie song. Now, well, later on, we're going to find out what the movie song is, but here, he's got this anticipation that we are gonna, we're going to hear what it is in the next verse. When you're going to realise it was just that the time was wrong. Now, I think this is does anybody know the andy williams song a time for us a time for us one day there'll be that's from the film version of romeo and juliet from 1968 so i think he has gone back to another version of romeo and juliet to take that um that reference to this song so it just it, ju it just it's got so many layers and it's just such clever clever lyrics i think um, so I, th I believe he's, he's pulling on the song from another version of the film. And then we get um, this verse. Come up on different streets, both were streets of shame, both dirty, both mean, yes, and the dream was just the same. Then we get the little bit that to me says he's helped her out of dark times. I dreamed your dream for you, now your dream is real. How can you look at me as if I was just another one of your deals? So whatever it is she does... Um, she's doing it very, very well, and she's left him behind. Now, I, this, um, looking back, come up on different streets, both were streets of shame. Clearly, they, they, they've sort of grown up in the same background. This is very reminiscent to me. Anybody know the Peter Sarsted song? Where do you go to, my lovely, when you're alone in your bed? Eileen's nodding. Eileen's of this ilk, and she likes things like this. I know that from, from other things. But yeah, Peter Sarsted wrote a song about a woman who, who was rich and famous and he was watching her and, and they grew up as, as um, poor children on the streets of Naples. And I think this is very, very similar to that. It, it, you know, they've sort of come through all this together and she's just gone, oi, I'm off and left him. Um, so he's helped her. She's successful um, and, and gone. Now, the rhyming pattern's normal all the way through, but I like this. Both dirty, both mean, yes, and the dream. So you've got a repetition between mean and dream quite quickly, quite near to each other. They're not at the end of a line. Um, that sort of rhyming is is a, a nice device that, that draws you back into that line again. Both dirty, both mean, yes, and the dream. So we've gone from dirty and mean to dream. So we've, we've transitioned from the awfulness of however they grew up to the fact that she's now got her dream. And left him behind, sadly. OK, next bit. You can fall for chains of silver. This is a clever verse as well for me. You can fall for chains of silver. You can fall for chains of gold. I think he's referring to her success and her money. I think that's what we're looking at there. You can fall for pretty strangers. I think he's fallen for the pretty stranger and the promises they hold. Then he uses promised again and again here. So he's gone from the promises they hold. You promised me everything. You promised me thick and thin. So it's clearly they've been close. They've had a, um, a fabulous relationship. Um, it has meant something to her at one point. But then she says, now he says, you say, oh, Romeo, yeah, you know, I used to have a scene with him. I thought the word scene was used because of the theatricality of the play, Romeo and Juliet. However, I have discovered in my research that, Holly Vincent, the girl that uh, dumped him and he's, he was broken hearted about, was interviewed and she said, what happened was that I had a scene with Mark Knopfler. It got to the point where he couldn't handle it and we split up. So she actually said I had a scene in an interview. So he's put it into this, but it adds to the th theatricality of the play, of the original play Romeo and Juliet. Then we get to, oh, let me play it to there. Let's play it to there again. Listen to all these things. And then we get to the chorus, which is beautiful. 
Um, so I can just press play. I'll go back to the beginning. Listen to that riff and how it keeps appearing. Minimise your Spotify, Debbie. I love struck Romeo. Sing the streets of serenade. Laying everybody low with a love song that he made. Find the street light. Steps out of the shade, says something like You and me, babe, how about it? Juliet says, hey, it's Romeo He nearly gave me a heart attack He's underneath the window, she's singing Hey, like my boyfriend's back You shouldn't come around here Singing up to people like that Anyway, what you gonna do about it? Juliet, the dice was loaded from the start, and I bet many you exploded into my heart, and I forget, I forget the movie song. When you're gonna realize it was just that the time was wrong, Juliet. On different streets, they both were streets of shame. Both dirty, both mean. Yes, and the dream was just the same. And I dreamed your dream for you, and now your dream is real. How can you look at me as if I was just another one of your deals? When you can fall for chains of silver, you can fall for chains of gold, you can fall for pretty strangers. And the promises they hold You promised me everything You promised me thick and thin, yeah Now you just say, oh, Romeo, yeah You know, I used to have a scene with him Actually, yeah. Okay, so now we get to a chorus again But this time he changes it slightly. Juliet, when we made love, you used to cry. Clearly, the relationship meant as much to her as him at one point. You said, I love you like the stars above. I love you till I die. Any reference to stars, for me, is always romantic. Always very, very romantic. But Romeo and Juliet, known as the star-crossed lovers, I think it's another little um, dip back for that. Now, we find out what the movie song is here. There's a place for us, you know, the movie song. Does everybody know? There's a place for us from West Side Story, which is the story of Romeo and Juliet. Such clever, put-together lyrics um, if you know them. If you don't, it, it won't mean anything. But if you know all the links, it, it's just so cleverly put together. And just, I love it. Absolutely love it. So there's a place for us, you know, the movie song, when you're going to realise it's just that the time was wrong. Back to the song again from the other Romeo and Juliet. Now, best verse ever. I also like the way in the in the uh, choruses, it's quite instrumental and quite big. And then in the little bits in between, if you want to call them a verse, it pairs right back to, to, to very little orchestration. Um, he now does this bit, which I really, really like. And it's all about what he can't do. Very self-deprecating, very humble, very much um, he doesn't believe he's as good as this girl. I can't do the talks like they talk on the TV. I can't do a love song like the way it's meant to be, which is a ridiculous line because he's writing the most beautiful love song ever. I can't do everything, but I'll do anything for you. I like the way he switches everything to anything. I can't do anything except be in love with you. But I won't do that. Sorry, Are different they? song. Yeah, different song. And this came first, I think you'll find. If you're thinking, you're thinking of meatloaf, yeah. Uh, this one came first. Um, but he, but he does write. He does all the. I can't do the talk like they do on the TV. Yes, he can. Absolutely beautifully, really eloquent and really gorgeous. And then this one, the music references. I like this verse very, very much. All I do is miss you and the way we used to be. All I do is keep the beat. The bad company, and there's a finger clip at the end of company that's timed perfectly and comes from nowhere. So listen out for that. 
all I do is kiss you through the bars of a rhyme. What a beautiful line. You, it, it's got a feeling because through bars, as if something's something's between them, something's stopping them being together, and then he slips rhyme on the end and turns it into a, a musical phrase again. And Juliet, I do the stars with you anytime. So we're back to stars, um, back to the romance of stars. Um, that is, I think that's a really, really lovely verse with the beat and the bars and the rhyme being all very, very musical. Um, and then we get to a chorus again, same as before. We're talking about the movie song being There's a Place for Us. <coughs> and then at the very end, the very end, by which time I'm normally crying, he repeats the first verse, but he, could this be, has he moved on? Could this be a different girl? Because he's now finding a convenient street light. In the first verse, he just found a street light. Finds a street light, steps out of the shade as if he's planned it. Finds a convenient street light. Is he in a different place? Has he moved on slightly? Is it a new girl he's trying to woo? I don't know this. I'm just, I'm just wondering. Or is it that he's just find any street light because he's so desperate to get to her? It depends whether you want it to have a bit of hope at the end or whether you want to cry all about you know whether you want to think oh bless him he's moving on a little bit or oh my word no nothing's going to happen but there is a little bit of hope at the end for me because he says you and me babe how about it and then there's a little bit of brilliant guitar because he's a fab guitar player and then a quiet repeat of you and me babe how about it so he's not given up at the end of the of the verse like he could have done he's waited a minute and he's tried again so there is a little bit of a a little bit of a lift at the end, a little bit of hope. Um, when he sings this verse again, A Love Struck Romeo, there's even more of a sob in his voice than it was the first time through. Um, so my feeling is it's probably the same girl and he, he's not getting anywhere and she's really not having it, um, which I think is rather sad. I, I took the definition of tragedy as from the point of view of a theatrical piece because everybody thinks that if something's a bit sad, it's a tragedy and it's not. A tragedy is a very specific thing. The hero or heroine brought down by his or her own flaws, um, ordinary human flaws, which could be greed, overambition, excess of love. So this is a classic tragedy because it's that excess of love that they had that caused the death of um, of this case both of them but one or both of them so so it, it's a proper tragedy in the true sense of the word as i say tragedy doesn't just mean somebody that's got it by a bus that'd be tragic but it ain't a tragedy so let me play it all the way through um i'm gonna play it without i'm gonna get rid of the words because i want you to just listen to it um now that you've gone through the words i want you to just listen to it you can see my spotify list there talk about depressing desperado let me in you're a lady this is one of the happier ones. Um, yeah, so I want you to listen to it without um, reading the words. Bear in mind what we've talked about and see whether you, you can get more from it now that you've had a little bit of an analysis of the words. Uh, and just enjoy his guitar playing, his voice, listen for the finger click and listen for the difference in um, orchestration from the, the big verse that's all, all about Romeo and Juliet when he drops down a little bit to the... Um, to the smaller ones it doesn't sound like verse chorus to me it sounds like just lots of sections um and i'm going to take the sheet screen share off so that i can see everybody as well Yay. you've also stopped sharing your sound debbie by doing that yeah <laughs> <laughs> hang on then oh Uh, you'd think how many how long we've been doing it two nearly two years indeed that makes very little difference though <laughs> nearly two years right wait a minute then so i only need to share my sound don't i advanced computer audio share it's because you're here simon everybody goes to pieces because we want you to think we're brilliant i do think we're brilliant Streets of serenade, laying everybody low, 
with a love song that he made. Find the street light, steps out of the shade, says something like, You and me, babe, how about it? Juliet says, Hey, it's Romeo, you nearly give me a heart attack. He's underneath the window, she's singing, Hey, like I'm a boyfriend's boy. You shouldn't come around here singing up at people like that. What you gonna do about it? Juliet, the dice was loaded from the start, and I bet many of you exploded in my heart, and I forget, I forget the movie song. When you're gonna realize it was just that the time was wrong, Juliet. Come up on different streets They both were streets of shame Both dirty, both mean Yes, and the dream was just the same And I dreamed your dream for you And now your dream is real How can you look at me as if I was just another one of your deals When you can fall for chains of silver You can fall for chains of gold You can fall for pretty strangers and the promises they hold You promised me everything You promised me thick and thin, yeah Now you just say, oh, Romeo, yeah You know, I used to have a scene with him Juliet, when we made love You used to cry You said, I love you like the stars above I love you till I die There's a place for us You know the movie song Can't do the talks like the talk on the TV, and I can't do a love song like the way it's meant to be. I can't do everything, but I'll do anything for you. I can't do anything except be in love with you. And all I do is miss you, and the way we used to be. All I do is keep the beat. Bad company And all I do is kiss you Through the bars of a rhyme Julie, I do the stars with you Anytime I do, yeah When we made love You used to cry I said I love you like the stars above I love you till I die and there's a place for love You know the moon
It's one of those songs that they always fade the guitar at the end out too early because it's just fabulous. Who, who, I'm going to glance across two screens, didn't know that song? Who didn't know it? Oh, my word. Oh, there's some English people who didn't know it. Shame for shame. Oh, most people didn't know it. Wow. Oh, I'm amazed. I thought most people would know it. Um, it, it's Dire Straits are fabulous if you don't know any of their stuff. I mean, he's it is, it is an incredible guitar player. Um, but for me, that was just um, something that we could get our teeth into looking at lyrics. And it, it, I and I honestly do do that with any new song I get. I try and find my way into it by, by looking at anything clever in it. It also helps me remember the lyrics if I've looked at the structure of it and um, and things like that and how it works with the melody and things like that. We could have gone on for a lot longer, but I, I grudgingly have to hand over to Simon. So I hope you've enjoyed that. Um, and I apologise for, apparently I was clicking my pen a lot. Somebody put in the chat, stop clicking your pen. It is a Merrill Osmond pen. Does that mean that that's all right, everybody? It's an Osmond pen that I was clicking. Makes it um, worse. Thank you. Thank you for indulging me. And I hand over. Yes, he is very expressive, Ros is saying. Uh, absolutely. He, as I say, he isn't the best singer. You, somebody else could do that song and sing it a million times better, but it wouldn't touch you like that one does. I'm shutting up now, Simon. Thanks. <laughs> Bless you, Debbie. Thank you very much. Now I've gone on on my uh, little section of this is kind of entirely different. Um, not entirely different, but it, again, it bases um, words and again, actually focusing in on how one might portray musical ideas with words. Okay, uh, so I'm going to share my skirt read. Now I umdenard with Debbie about how much in oh, one second about how much information to give. I've changed my mind, uh, not surprisingly. So never. yeah, you never you know me, Debbie. So just gonna can you see my screen quality. So these were now because I, I just have to. Oh dear. Oh wait. Oh dear. Ooh, you can still hear me or see me, but uh, one sec. Can anybody still hear me or see me? We can see you and hear you, but your image is frozen. Okay, that's cool. Oh, I'm back. Cool, that's fine. No. Yeah, sorry, I resized my window thing and it, it went a bit funny. Now, um, I wondered about whether to tell you the next bit of information, but I will say, because otherwise I think it feels a little bit um, deceptive. This is written by me. So I wrote these words. Okay, it's just a poem. Okay, it's just a poem. I, I'm not the greatest poet in the world, but I did write these words. Um, um, but again, I just want to go through and then looking at how, because I've turned these words into a song, but I didn't write it as a song, if that makes sense. So this is from, the, from Debbie's idea of poetry in motion is if you write something is then how on earth do you put that thing into, into music? Okay. If you just look at the poem, it's just a, well, I don't know, actually, I am quite happy with it. It's, I was going to say it's just standard and generic, but I suppose no one's poem is standard and generic if they wrote it themselves. So I just want to kind of give you a little look at that and just almost to kind of go, what is the things with words that you would want to convey musically? Okay. Um, so it's just a wintry poem. So I'll read it in my best poetry voice. Stillness. Stillness in the creep towards the morning, an icy blanket laid out upon the ground. Shards of weakened sunlight gently pass the evergreens. The slumber and the stillness lies. But here among the frozen air, there hangs the hope of spring to come. The promise of a golden sun still many days away. And here we are and still we are and breathless we shall be. For the precious gift of stillness is a friend who needs no company. Okay, so initially it's just a poem and it's, it, yeah, you can kind of think what maybe you think it might be about and what kind of images it may well portray. Um, the question is, how do you put that into a piece of music? It's not, a, I suppose I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not actually expecting an answer there. But if you look at, uh, when I look at that lyric, I wrote it as a poem and wasn't actually intending on turning it into a song. And actually it was quite challenging. Who knew? Um, because I think, I don't know this for a fact, but I would imagine that Mark Knopfler wrote the lyrics of Romeo and Juliet knowing he was writing a song, as opposed to 
writing a poem that he then has to turn into a song. And I think we say that songs are poems, and yes, they are, but sometimes um, it's like if I was to try and put a Shakespeare sonnet, which this, this is, by the way, not, to music, sometimes it's quite difficult to actually make something that is a poem. Sometimes they naturally work. Sometimes it's quite difficult to do that, okay? Um, so I'm just going to kind of, and again, I'm going to break some rules here. Um, which bits stick out? And I mean, like, which bits would you want, which words might you therefore look at? Feel free to use the chat if you want. Again, definitely not a Debbie session, this now. Um, but what words would you, yeah, Debbie? I like icy blanket. I think icy is quite onomatopoeic. Um, and that, that idea of in the morning, it, it doesn't matter if it's snowed on, but there's always that frost, isn't there? That sort of frozen dew so that yeah. i like that and i also like weakened sunlight so that the sunlight's obviously coming through the trees and and so it makes it look little thin little thin bits of sunlight instead of fat ones yeah is that the feeling you were trying to get oh no yeah definitely no because the thing is it's you look at those things anytime we write, read a poem and this includes a poem that i wrote because i when I, I was deciding to put it into music uh, you have to find which bits do you want to really get across what are the important go-to points in a, in a in a in a line and therefore you need to kind of aim towards those words that you really want to get now when we're singing and again again not a professional composer so you'll just have to bear with me so things like that debbie says icy I see blanket. You've got that. You've got the ability to make some. And again, there's ways of hopefully trying to make chords that might sound icy. So instantly you move towards possibly something that might be dissonant, that might not be a consonant chord. So to give a sense of that kind of slight kind of rub of, of notes close to one another, for example. Um, again, things like the word slumber. And again, how you can get across the idea of slumber and kind of peacefulness and stillness. Again, things with the word like lies. What are you going to do with the end of a thing with lies? Again, the idea of making a, some chord, something with the vocals move downwards or kind of feel like it's sitting or lying down. So it's all these kind of, and you can, it's difficult to know what to do, but you definitely know when you get it wrong, if you know what I mean. Just like, it's like if I was going to say, um, I was walking down the stairs and that's my my lyric and I literally decided my melody was I was walking down the stairs and it's like well you're clearly not because your melody went the wrong direction um so all those things like if you're saying that or do you see what I mean like the rain is falling down it's like well it went the wrong way because it went upwards so there's simple things and then there's things where you want to actually use the music use the words sorry as part of your phrase so again, frozen, the v -v -v the fr, frozen, almost like that kind of slight shudder in frozen um, is also there. Again, the, and I know what I did, but I know it took me a while to get there, but the promise of a golden sun, okay? Again, at some point you're gonna have to therefore, um, and yeah, uh, Mike Rowe sent me that just literally, just before I said that, sent me the, exactly the same thing, promise of a golden sun. Um, the idea of that, that's going to have to be different. There's going to have to be a sense of warmth. So how are you going to get across warmth and how are you going to get across cold just with music? So again, and it's about what are you, you know, yeah, anyway, I'm going to just continue to scroll so we don't go over time. Um, there's a little bit of uh, here we are and still we are. So the possibility there of repeating melodies or repeating the, the prevailing um, rhythm within there. Here we are and still we are, it almost seems like Frozen. You're frozen, Simon. I don't know whether you can hear us. I can hear Debbie. Back in the room. I'm going to keep on speaking until I'm back in the room. You're back, Simon, you're back. I'm back in the room, that's brilliant. So as I was saying, here we are and still we are. Um, and breathless we shall be is almost slightly chanty you, if you see what I mean there's the possibility of getting across that um, thing and again the precious yeah and I'm not going Gollum in Lord of the Rings here but the idea of precious you've got the pr and the sh you've got quite a lot of of air in the sound again so this was all things I had to think about it wasn't an easy poem to turn into music um, again even stillness and where you put that s 
um, is a friend who needs no company, um, which is wasn't the was. Yeah. So so looking at that is what you do. So, again, you can see just a standard poem. And really, it was just about having a look through. And um, yeah, so I am going to play you um, what I've got. OK, um, but, 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 let me just share my sound. Now, the next thing is the is what um, again, if you were in creative communal composition a little bit ago, it's what do you want a piece of music to be? <laughs> so it's quite important when you start composing something. Now, it's clear that this one is a cappella, but it's definitely not going to have a doobie doobie bass line. I think it's quite clear that if I was to go like dom dom dum da dum stillness dum 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 da da dum i think everyone's like you'd be ruining so so it has to feel still and i kind of went what i was after was contemporary choral kind of contemporary choral which i don't normally compose in that style so this for me was a completely new style of stuff that i was um going to do so one second just let me get onto it and you can see, and again, feel free to tell me if I've not done it very well. Um, possibly private message it to me if you think it's not very good. Uh, <laughs> I don't think I could cope with the, uh, with the honesty. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, oh, one other thing is, because the first word is stillness, I chose, and again, uh, again, it's it's um similar thing with um the dire straits is that what's your intro before your lyrics? What do you do before the lyrics start? Do you just start with lyrics straight in? Because this is a cappella, I've gone for sounds. I've gone for sounds, and I've gone for kind of for me almost a hymn like old kind of plain chant hymn like medieval kind of drone kind of stuff you'll, you'll kind of get it um and i've gone for a minor key not surprisingly okay have a listen and like, uh, we'll go from there and you can see if you can pick out any of those things where i've tried to fit things to the words uh one sec give me a thumb up when you can hear something excellent i'll start that again you might want to turn it's not massively loud um so you might just want to turn your uh uh sound up can you still see my screen or have i gone you can excellent
So, um, so for me, it was a poem to then try and pick out those things, even things like evergreens. There was like a little kind of suspension on evergreen. So there's a little note that eventually moved past. So it's just all those little things. And I have to say it, it took a while and I'm still not, I'm still not fully certain on all of it. Uh, Cause it's, it's clashy. It's clashy and it's, it's challenging at times to listen to, I think. Um, so for, again, feel free to utilize the chat if you, um, if there's any kind of thoughts, cause it's, it's not what I'm not expecting is everyone to go, ah, well, it's lovely. Cause I'm I'm very I'm happy with it. It's it's kind of a different style, but actually it's interesting the idea of what you do with lyrics. And again, much better composers than me, they do these great things. Where the more you look into a piece of music, I'll just stop sharing for a second. Um, uh, you'll have heard of the choral composer Eric Whitaker. One of my favourite pieces by Eric Whitaker is actually of um, an arrangement he did of a Nine Inch Nails song called Hurt, um, where the original song. Um, had a tritone in it. I think I mentioned this in mine and Fred's history of vocal harmony. And it had the tritone, which is like the most dissonant interval and how he copes and how he actually based his whole composition around. There's a really interesting video talking to Eric Whitaker um, about how he went and composed that piece of music, really highlighting that dissonant interval from an original and really basically basing everything on it and adding a re additional dissonance. And actually his point was that that is almost like it's a, there's a pain pleasure principle um, with, with, with dissonance, that kind of, that kind of compression and release. So I was kind of in my own small way, trying to kind of go for that kind of early kind of, kind of his kind of medieval type kind of sounding old music with kind of the essence of new in that kind of, in that kind of way. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to kind of slightly share that um, just to kind of point out, again, I suppose from a composery point of view, I think I might have lost you again. Can you hear me? My internet connection is being all kinds of weird. So yeah, so um, da -da 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 -da. yeah, so um, just kind of having a look at how you would come, how you would actually look at those lyrics and, and what composers actually look at when you're trying to turn lyrics, especially if they're not your own, um, what you do that. Eric, um, I think... Yeah, so hopefully that's that kind of makes sense. So yeah, it's kind of uh, I'm I quite I quite enjoyed having the uh, thing of trying to put a a poem to music. So hopefully it was an enjoyable listen in its way. Uh, Debbie has her hand up. It's not like you, Debbie. I was trying to work out why I keep disappearing. I've got a green top on. How stupid am I? That's why I keep disappearing. Anyway, um, I think the lyrics um when you listen to it, not so much, but the lyrics are very similar to those of us who did it, to the lyrics of The Rose, or the feeling is that underneath all of the snow and all of the horridness are fantastic things waiting to pop up. That You know what I mean? Like we, mm. when we, The Rose was all about underneath the snow already, that rose is growing and by the spring it'll be here. And this had the same sort of feeling that things were about to take a turn uh, and, and, and turn beautiful again. That's, that's what I got from it. Mm. Yeah, no, I, I agree. It kind of it's it's interesting. There's there's multiple directions, and it's it's interesting going. Well, I know it's interesting taking. Uh, oh well, I'm paraphrasing across the session, which is myself and Fred uh, with our arranging the two same songs. Similar thing. You always get if you gave those lyrics to someone else, they would come up with probably a very. There'd be similarities, even just by a treatment of a lyric. There's certain places that composers would go, but the brilliant thing is that someone would go complete. Would sound very different. There'd be similarities. And there will be real differences. And I think it's, I always, I think is never forgetting to be a scholar, to be going, looking at that music and thinking, why is it that I like something? And how is it that composer has um, taken those words and tried to give meaning to them, especially without instrumentation, especially when it's only, you've only got voices to go back on. You've not got the ability of a chord sequence. You've not got the ability of, of rhythm and what really good composers, and I do not class myself in this, but really good composers where you just, you're just thinking how it's like every little thing. There's just so much nuance, so much subtlety, so much variety, and just yeah, they are, uh, they they earn their uh, they earn their wage. That's for sure. Um, so I think we are pretty much at time with this session, Debbie. Um, is there any questions or thoughts that anyone has? We're four minutes before time. Um, um, any questions that anyone has? Pop your hand up. Quite a few people I mentioning in the chat that is it our next song. That's been said 
well, more than a few times, if you read through the chat. That would be unlikely, wouldn't it? It's too hard. It's too hard. <laughs> too hard. It's too hard. It's got to do semitone clashes in it. No one wants to sing semitone clashes. No. Nah. You're not getting any information from me, folks. You're not getting any kind of information. It's not present time. It's not present time yet. You've got loads of presents before we get to Christmas anyway. You've got loads of presents coming. You just wait. You've got some presents coming in the next few days, which is an in interesting time. Any questions, though, folks? Any questions, my darlings? Sue Talbot. From the chat at the beginning, this is about the final video recording time today for members. Can someone just post in the in the chat the, the UK time and the numbers and the password for some of us who, like me, might be a little confused? Uh, if someone else can do that, that would be fabulous. But yeah, it's 8.30, so it's basically in an hour's time. I don't know off the top of my head what the code is, but I'm sure somebody with a, uh, a timetable, Suzanne Eckers, oh, Ian, um, Ian, or Suzanne, Ian, exactly. Ian or Suzanne, they've both got spreadsheets. Either of them can uh, uh, pop that in the chat for you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions, folks? Or any other thoughts? Depends on what where you go with lyrics. I always love looking at lyrics. I always love really, really kind of... Um, Kind of getting kind of down and dirty with all the kind of uh, analysis and stuff. Although actually I listen to a piece and I love it first. And then when I love something, then I like going and kind of taking the, taking it apart a little bit. I have to love it to make me want to go and take it apart. That's just me. I, I wouldn't take things apart just for the sake, but I want to love it. And then I'm like, oh, what makes it tick? Especially if there's chords that I love and I want to then go and steal those chords from those composers and then use them in my own pieces. That's always the fun one. Um, Sometimes it's stealing, it's just taking harmonic language. Laura Fisher, you had your hand up for a second. I just yes, saw yes I did. It, it, this just reminds me of a class I took in school where we took the lyrics of Paul Simon, the older Simon and Garfunkel songs. Some of Paul Simon's lyrics are just absolutely stunning poetry. So yeah. you can do a whole class on lyrics. Oh, there's, there's tons of stuff. There's tons of stuff you, you can... And, and it's interesting when you start looking into those again, as well, as Debbie was saying, those little, those little kind of, um, those little kind of nods to other songs and films and other things that if you're in the know, you just get more appreciation for it as you go. Um, especially when you've got duality of meaning in lyrics as well, where the lyric says one thing, but actually it kind of means another. But also, again, the, the songs that I like is where also the, you can read in yourself. It's not too obvious. I always like allowing it. I like to be, able to find my place in a song and actually that there's i can read into it myself again there's there's enough opportunity for very even if you know they're re writing it about a personal situation you can still put yourself in that and kind of place your own life experiences in it and it's a tricky thing with lyrics to be able to to be able to allow the listener their own place and still tell the the composer's story always really kind of interesting balance uh nikki atkins has a hand up I do, thank you. I just wanted to say um, how awful it is when there's a really bad lyric in a song and how that can absolutely spoil your enjoyment of, of it completely. Just bad rhymes in particular are the ones that just throw you off completely, don't they? You don't want to listen to it again for that. Which rhyme in my song was 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 bad? <laughs> well, well, now you mention it. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> no, I agree sometimes. Yeah, and it can take you completely out of the, especially if it's a rhyme that you know has been added there so it does rhyme because it wasn't needed and it's just been added in to make it rhyme. You kind of, at that point, you lose it. The integrity of the message of a song, I kind of slightly always lose it. I'm like, oh no, why did you have to do that? I'd rather it didn't rhyme and it was real than it rhymed and then it just, yeah, I'm completely with you, Nikki. Anything else from anyone? We're one minute over, but unless there's any questions, Debs, 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 Debs. Debs. Thank Debs, you. Debs, Debs. I, I just, my time space continuum is a little warped after all this constant and it just felt um, so meditative and calming to have the session after such a barrage of inter, uh, information and intellectual analysis. So I'm just really, I feel really grateful and peaceful, which I haven't felt much so thank oh, you good well that will be the uh that will be those people in the music team 
uh, who decided in what order all the chef sessions were happening. So he's decided what would work. And again, they obviously felt that this felt like a like a later for us in this country, a kind of Sunday evening con contemplation session. Um, I'm not sure this would have been quite the same on a Saturday morning. It might have felt a little bit different if we did it on a Saturday morning. But uh, but no, thank you so much, folks. Debbie, you want to say anything else or? Not really, other than my worst favourite ever bad rhyme was, um, I can't remember what her name is, the female singer who rhymed Al Fresco with Tesco. Do, do anybody know who I mean? Rachel will know who I'm it's talking Lily about. It's Lily Allen, I think. Lily <laughs> Allen, hideous. Yeah, Al Fresco, Tesco. Hated it. But no. Thank you, everybody, for coming. It's been smashing. Well, the whole weekend's been fabulous, hasn't it? So if you've been in any sessions with me, all of you, it's just been a blast, absolute blast. Very proud to have been involved with it, I have to say. Thank you so much. Could anybody just quickly tell me the music team? When when is mine mine and Fred's um, music sharing uh, session? session? Is that nine? nine. Um, That's nine, fine. Yeah. Thank you. I was I just suddenly looked and I thought, I hope it's not a half seven because yeah, I'm three minutes video. late to it. You got the video. Oh, it's after it. That's picture. fine. Do you do any codes for that? Oh, yes. Let's do a picture, my darlings. Smile and pretend you enjoyed the session. Or if you did, actually smile. Anyway, someone else can take the photo. Who's taking it? Excellent. Thank you, Suzanne. Smile, everybody. Do the shoulder, right? <laughs>